See, all of a sudden God speaks them and that glory of the Lord and the life of God makes you unselfish. It makes you want to do the will of God. It makes you want to find out what pleases the Lord. It is the life of God that brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light. It's that light that he wants to shed on us day by day by his Holy Spirit. I saw your upon the Lord. No, Matthew, uh, uh, Matthew 6, Matthew 6, he said, he says, no man can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one, love the other, or else he'll hold to the one and despise the other. This is a profound statement. This is what Jesus was saying to his disciples. You cannot serve two masters. What he's implying is that the God of wealth and riches will pull on you to do it's his way just like God. And it won't let you go. The more you get, the more you want. The God of the mammon, the money is just as strong. It'll pull on you. I've run into people, boy, they, they can't make enough. I mean, they, and, and, and guess what? Once they get it, they can't even rest. They, can't even, they don't have peace. They put all kinds of security to protect it, and they can't sleep. Oh, Lord. But you know what? With what give, God gives you, if you let him do it, you can sleep like a baby. You ain't got to be worried. <laughs> let, let, me, let me tell you what happened. I told this before. Years ago, when I first got my Escalade, I was so happy. I love that thing, you know. But anyway, one day, at the time, they said that the, there was a demand for that, you know, vehicle you know the pickup kind of so one morning I got up and we had we was we had the milk delivered to us at that time so I forgot and so it was like four o'clock in the morning the milkman came I heard something out there I saw a car door open and I thought they was trying to take my truck <laughs> man I got up and I rushed down there. So when I got there, I saw the milkman dropping milk. I said, oh, Lord. Your heart can get attached to things if you don't let God bless you as he want to bless you. Your heart can get attached to it, and if you accumulate it, and, and then it's not going to be the same as when you wait your time, allow God to bring it to you. Hallelujah. If you allow God to bring it to you, he knows that your heart is in the right place. I must be speaking to somebody on TV. Some of the people, they've been wanting so much, they can't figure out why they're always lacking and so on. Try seeking God's will. Try seeking God's will. Forget about trying to get ahead in this life. Try seeking God's will. God will bring you. He will advance you as you are ready because God desires that we all prosper, right? That's his will, but not at the expense of the kingdom, right? Not at the expense of the kingdom. There's a, the story is told about a man. This is a true story. The man was so faithful every day. He'd come in there. He's at the altar weeping and talking to the Lord. So faithful. One day God blessed him. 
with a lot of money. You know that man was not. <laughs> he wouldn't come to church no more. <laughs> Where'd brother so and so? Brother so was living it up. You know? <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, thank God you're not like that. <laughs> Amen. But the God of wealth and riches, they will pull on you. They will pull on you. I remember years ago, I first, after I got educate, educated, got into retails, I was going, I was going, but I was going to make I was going to make some money. I'd been to every network marketing uh, uh, scheme. I'd been there and all the little classes they took. I, I'd been through it all. But God was merciful to me. He knew that I wasn't ready for that. Why? Because I grew up poor. And there's some characteristics that you develop as a poor person. That has to be dealt with. No, you didn't hear what I'm saying here. So God had to teach me about this thing. Wealth don't make you. But I thought it. If I could just get this. No, no, no. People are not going to respect you unless you serve God. And do it God's way. Isn't that right? What I'm saying, I had to learn these things. And God was so faithful. He's just so faithful because he wants us to prosper and be in hell. That's his, that's his plan. That's his will. And so, anyway, we, so we don't, we, we learn the things. Three things I'm going to give you right fast. I don't want to be long here as I looked into that passage here. One, watch out for misguided affections. Watch out for misguided affections. Misguided, what do you mean? Led or prompted by wrong or inappropriate motives or ideas. Watch out for misguided affections. We don't always know ourselves. But God does. And he's a good father. James, in chapter 4, he says, Whence come wars and fightings among you? Isn't that right? And he makes it kind of plain and kind of blunt with what he said. He says... Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask, receive not because ye ask wrong, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Then he went ahead and said something like this, adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. We're strangers. We're pilgrims. We're only passing through. Watch out for misguided affections. All right? Don't. He talk, James talks about spiritual adultery. Matthew talks about the worries. And being full of cares of this life. Right? Matthew 6, what I just read. Colossians 3 says, Set your affections on things that are above and not on things on the earth. Right? Because you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Let's watch out. Or misguided affections. Let's make sure that we're dealing honestly with ourselves. Dealing honest with ourselves. First and foremost is the kingdom. And the second thing that I saw out of this passage that we read today concerning John. Distinguish between the old and the new nature. Distinguish. Make the distinction, right? Perceive or point out the difference. Differentiate. Recognize or treat it as different. The new nature from the old, right? God, Ephesians 2 says, uh, we were spiritually dead 
and it shows the effects that it has upon them. So since that we are alive now, we operate like children that are alive from the dead. And so we must distinguish between the old and the new. The old nature, the Bible, Paul said in Galatians, he says, let me read it, Galatians 5. He says, This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. So there must be a distinction between the flesh life and the spirit led life. God desires to lead us by his spirit because as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God. So we must expect God's leadership in our daily lives as sons of God born of God. The spirit of God will lead us and um, I, I told this story often about a friend of mine, and uh, God was, was, was wanting him to go to the hospital to pray for the sick somebody. He, and uh, so he got in his car. He had another agenda. And he was going, and uh, <laughs> it's funny, and you've heard it before. And he gets in his car. God said, I want you to go to the hospital. He said, no, God, you know, just like that. No, God. So he was determined. He got in his car and began to switch the ignition on. Because he was determined, he had some other thing he wanted to do. When he turned the ignition, he blanked out. When he woke up, guess where he was? <laughs> he was in the hospital. <laughs> Sometimes God will give us crucial lessons, you know, that you must respond the way I want you to respond. And sometimes he's a little lenient on us, you know. But to him, he knew better. He knew better. He knew God's voice. But there are some areas that he wasn't dead in. So he, he wanted to do this and he wanted to go contrary. What about you today? What has God been saying to you over the weeks and months and years? Are you responding to what he said? Are you doing what he asked you to do? What did he ask you to do? You can't use anybody else and say, well, if they, they got in my way, can't do that, right? Individually, we must obey what God gives us. It's so important. And he's talking to all of us, right? And not just in the sanctuary. He's talking to us because we're spirit beings. So that means, you know, I was listening to my wife, and, and he's telling her the exact stuff that he's been talking to me the last two weeks. And we're sitting there talking and said, wow, man, God is really talking. Why? Because this is the age of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit... Want center stage now, and he's speaking to us in our lives, so that when we hear God, Bible says, "He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church." Sensitivity to the Holy Spirit is very, very important, right? If I'm going to advance, if you're going to advance, as we're going to advance, then we must become more sensitive to when God is talking to us. Don't shrug it off and just say, well, you know, the Lord said this to me last month, last week. But what did you do with it? Did you obey him? Or did you just glory in the fact that God spoke to you? It is really critical that we obey God. It is so critical because if we're going to be the kind of, not if, as we are going to be, the kind of people that God is making us. The sensitivity to the Spirit of God is so important. As my wife said, the Lord was saying, so God speaks the word, and as we are able to hear and as we are sensitive, he brings it, right? He does it. Because his word doesn't return void. It accomplished what he planned. Somebody say, well, he's been saying that a long time. But guess what? He's using your, 
your, your, your, your friend, your neighbor, because you didn't hear. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The word doesn't return void. So we must listen now to the Lord, and he will do it. Okay, all right. So number one, as I said, watch out for misguided affections. Number two, distinguish between the old nature and the new nature. The old nature is selfish. The new nature is unselfish. That's one of the chief characteristics. And um, um, let's see. Paul points out the forces which war against believers as they seek to live godly lives. The struggle between the flesh and the spirit. Well, what is the answer? What do you do? I mean, what, what, what do you do? Romans 12, 1 and 2. Seat you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is just your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to the patterns, the values of this world's system, the dictates of the flesh that go along. Don't, don't be conformed to that. But rather be reshaped, transformed, metamorphosed take place. Hallelujah. When you hear that word of God, the word of God changes you, gives you a new mindset. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It brings life into dead situation where you think and suffer. All of a sudden God speaks them and that glory of the Lord and the life life of God makes you unselfish it makes you want to do the will of God it makes you want to find out what pleases the Lord it is the life of God that brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light it's that light that he want to shed on us day by day by his Holy Spirit make us different different we're not like the world we're different hallelujah we're different and everything about us must grow to that difference. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Distinguish between the old nature and the new nature. Glory to God. Let's yield to the Spirit and be mentally prepared. Yield to the Spirit. I look back over my life and some things God told me some years ago. I said, Larry Herring, have you obeyed what God told you to do? If not, why not? Isn't that right? I tell you, I can talk about me now. So. so it's important that we become sensitive to God and obey him. That's where the f success lies. Hallelujah. Hebrews 5 says, Strong meat belongs to those that are of mature age. What do you mean? Those basically to those that have learned to distinguish good from evil. Let me tell you something about what used to happen a lot. <laughs> you know, sometimes my wife and I used to have a disagreement, and a thought would come to my mind, and I didn't discern the origin, the root of it. It came from another source. It didn't come from God. So I spoke it, and guess what it did? It brought the fruit of the source. If ever you get upset and you say things and it's making people angrier and angrier and angrier and you're in the relationship with you, then you know you're, where you're coming from, the source is evil. Because when it's coming from God, it makes people want to do right. Isn't that right? Y'all hear what I'm saying? How about when God speaks to you? How about when God speaks to you? He says to you in a way that it makes you want to obey him. But when the devil speaks to you, he makes you want to argue. Even when he uses the word of God. There are times where Satan used the word of God on me and spoke things to me. And it made me want to justify myself, made me want to argue. So finally the Lord began to tell me, that's not me. My word doesn't do that. What I'm talking to you doesn't make you want to argue with me. 
if you do this, something badly wrong. And everything. <laughs> but I've found that for the most part, when God speaks to me, it makes me want to obey him. But when Satan speaks to me, this is good for somebody now. When Satan speaks to me, it either makes you feel less than, makes you feel a little bit guilt or condemnation, or makes you want to argue as to why. But it will not bear the fruit of penitence and make you want to change. So even in our listening to the voices, somebody said, the Lord showed me that this woman or this man is so and so. Well, what did you do with it? If it was the Lord, it didn't make you shun them. If, it, if that made you shun them, it might have been coming from the wrong source. Because God is love. Isn't that right? And all that he tells you, hallelujah, faith worketh by by love. So when God speaks to us, he doesn't tell you. And I, tell, I share with this, uh, ministers about this year discernment. Many people have discerning of spirit, but many are not mature enough to know what to do with it. Sometimes when people, there was an example is told about a, a particular church where uh, the, a person discerned something about the worship team. And they felt like this person shouldn't have been up in the worship team. And they got to the point where they would not even worship. When the person and the other was with the team. That was not God. If you get something from the Lord and it makes you act strange. You might want to throw it away. Because God makes us better not worse. Isn't that right? God makes us better not worse. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So the last thing I want to say is this. Not only distinguish between the old and new natures. Embrace eternal values. Embrace eternal values. The things that are temporal are going to pass away. He said, and the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But he that do the will of God remains forever. They transition from this life to the life to come. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want mine to last. I don't want to, things to stop at this world. There are a lot of people that feel like there's nothing beyond the grave. So they said, I'm going to live it up while I'm here. But they're wrong. There's something that goes beyond the grave. Hallelujah. Colossians tells us about wisdom. And I'm going to close with these two verses, but I want you to think about it. Turn to Luke chapter 17. Why it's important that we learn to walk with God, obey him, and not yield to the dictates of the flesh. Luke 17. When you're there, say amen. Verse 22 says, and he said to his disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. They shall say to you, see here, or see there. Go not after them, nor follow them. Because there's a lightning that lighted out of the one part under heaven, shines to the other part under heaven. So shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage till the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroy them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, are oh, you hearing me? He which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. 
remember Lot's wife. So important. Now I'll give you one last scripture here. Turn to chapter 21 in Luke. This is why it's so important for us to learn to walk consistently in the spirit and not obey the dictates of our flesh. Luke 21 verse 34 says, And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come upon, come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Watching. It helps us to be alert. When we learn to walk in the spirit and obey the dictates of the spirit rather than the flesh. It's a means to an end. Isn't that right? It's a means to an end. So when you're learning to set aside and crucify the flesh, there's an end result. It leads you to preparedness. It leads you to alertness. It leads you to be able to distinguish good and evil. It leads you to that and cause your life to be ready and on target when the Lord comes. Let's stand and give God some praise at this hour. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you because you're good. Thank you for your preparing us for the things that are coming. You love us so much. You care for us, Lord. We thank you. You see the future. You see what's going to take place. You see, Lord. We want to be prepared. And we thank you for your word. And we'll operate as pilgrims now. People that are just passing through will not get attached to things in this life to the point where it it moves us, keeps us from the will of God. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I saw your care upon the Lord. Cast all your care upon the Father